Welcome to a new daily top ask Reddit video. Today's topic. What is your favorite dead video game franchise? Portal. I was so sad when I found that the plans for Portal 3 were cancelled. Edit, I stand corrected I thought I had watched a few YouTube videos saying THA just scrapped plans. A lot of replies mention a Portal VR so my theory is that it was either that and I did watch said videos or I completely dreamt all of it. WHHHHYYYY Damn it Valve Is Splinter Cell dead? There hasn't been a Splinter Cell game in what, 5 years? But hey, they just put Sam Fisher in our 6th siege. It's definitely been a long time. No new Splinter Cell was ever released on Xbox One or PS4, so an entire generation without him now. Kota Just want Microsoft to gain the rights to make a single Star Wars game so Obsidian can make the third game. Except they should have the right amount of time to finish the game. Lots of folks around here forget that the game was only like 80% complete. Several companions had unfinished stories, and the last chunk of the game is very empty and feels super rushed. SSX It's tricky 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 I So many dope memories playing SSX as a kid Silent Hill or Dead Space Especially when you hear what the plan was going to be for Dead Space 4 A return to proper survival horror with you playing an Isaac traveling from world to world trying to stay alive in a galaxy with the brethren moons awake This post is bumming me out now Twisted Metal Saw someone that had idea for a Twisted Metal Battle Royale game. It would be the only such game worth playing. Edit, yes it's already a Battle Royale. He meant upping the scale to match modern games like Fortnite. Crimson Skies. There are no two words that are cooler placed together than Sky Pirate. Those planes should have been added to Flight Simulator 2020. Spore, it deserved so much more but got shot down by EA. 100% agree. Absolutely loved Spore, I actually bought it on disc when it came out. This franchise had so much potential. So disappointed that they didn't make another, Dark Spore doesn't count, totally different. Game was different than most. FYI there is a project called Thrive by a small group of volunteer devs that is intended to become what Spore should have been. They really emphasize scientific accuracy, but they've only got the cell stage done for now and it's basically alpha level. My hope is that if they can get some attention, perhaps once they get to the multicellular or creature stage, that the project will get bought by a studio with the manpower to finish it in a reasonable time. Command and Conquer, Red Alert Mercenaries If you have the chance to play Mercenaries 2, do it. It's absolutely favorite game of all time. They were working on a third but it got cancelled and the studio folded. Edit, damn. Thanks for gold and the up bodies. Glad I'm not alone when it comes to such a great game. Also the first one deserves praise. Go play both. If you can. The wrong pandemic ended. Dude, I was so stoked when I saw the footage from Mercenaries 3 development. Then found out it was cancelled. One of my favorite details from the games is that each character can understand a second language, so depending on who you're playing as you get English subtitles when the faction leaders think they are talking amongst themselves. Matthias understands the Russians, Jacobs knows Korean, and Mua speaks Chinese. Max Payne Came here to say this. Every Max Payne game is in my top 10 best games of all time. I agree that 3 had a totally different atmosphere but it also had the most satisfying gunplay of any game I've played in my whole life. It's a shame Rockstar didn't carry over the highly polished shooting mechanics into GTA or RDR. Health sound in the game does so much. Jack and Daxter Fun fact, the Last of Us team at Naughty Dog was originally going to be making a Jack and Daxter sequel but switched. I hope to see another Jack and Daxter game someday. What I like about Naughty Dog is that their games have grown with the audience, so if you were a kid when Crash Bandicoot came out, you were always the target age for each franchise at the time of them coming out. Preteen Crash Bandicoot. Young teen Jack and Daxter, which even accounted for your edgy 14-year-old phase with Jack 2. Teen forward slash young adult Uncharted. Adult The Last of Us. Of course as an adult you can enjoy them all, but feels like a nice touch. Left 4 Dead. There's a new updated for L4D2 called Last Stand. It's good too. 
and I can't figure out if it's just really hard, or the rest of the game is too easy because my friends and I have all the old levels memeized. F0 I heard that Nintendo don't think there's any room for the series to grow, which I disagree with. If Mario Kart can grow, so can F0. They could add the upgrade system from Episode iPod Racer. I also think there's plenty of ways to tell a story in that world. Black and white. Rip. We've got this notion that we'd quite like to sail the ocean so we're building a big boat to leave here for good. But we simply can't leave until we've got more wood. B and W literally rewrote the rules for how Game Ari worked. The Ari knew basically nothing when the game started, and learned to do things as the game went on. That just isn't a thing anymore. I was still pretty young when it came out, but I remember being amazed by how the creature learned and adapted and changed based on what you did. Was definitely groundbreaking for the time. Bure out. I'm surprised I haven't seen it here yet. Genuinely the best car crashing game series ever made. Groundbreaking in so many ways. Then Criterion was acquired and essentially beaten to death by EA, until the original members defected and founded their own studio again. Looking forward to their follow-up to Bure Out Paradise, they had so many ambitions for that game before EA put them on ice. Edit, patience, Bure Out fans, https www.3fieldsitertainment.com I spent hundreds of hours playing Bure Out 3, Revenge and NFS, Hot Pursuit 2010 back in the day. I'm glad NFS was remastered but I'd love it if the other two got the same treatment or a true Bure Out sequel. No more open-ended races, the return of Crash Mode. Roller Coaster Tycoon Nothing after 3 is canon. I've been corrected many times about the spelling of canon. I'm not changing it because I don't want to. Thanks for the awards but please donate to a charity before giving a stranger internet points. Try Planet Coaster. Same team as RCT3. It seemed to be a better roller coaster creation game but a worse park management game than RCT. Time Splitters. Edit, whoa. I didn't expect this comment to blow up. Thanks for the awards. Time Splitters was amazing. Especially the one that had the level maker. There were like 50 characters, a ton of weapons, a lot of stages. You just can't beat it. Future Perfect, yes. That game had so much content, great multiplayer, kick-ass player campaign, tons of characters, weapons and different levels, challenges, a level editor, etc. And it had a ton of humor fuck, this game was funny. Truly a treasure from the golden age. Sly Cooper. We need a proper fifth game to undo the misery that was Thieves in Time. Came to say this. Sly 2 remains one of my favorite games of all time though I thoroughly enjoyed all four games in the series. And please God, should Sly 5 see the light of day, bring back Dimitri. SimCity. It's sad that SimCity 4 is still the best one to this day, and there won't be another since Max's is dead. Pretty sure Cities, Skylines is the canon SimCity 5. Love Cities but it's more of a city design game and less of a city simulator. Have high hopes for Cities 2, if it ever came out, since the first game had to be dumbed down due to hardware limitations. Wario. I used to play the shit out of Wario Land 1, 2, 3, and 4. Metal Gear. Solid answer. Dungeon Keeper. It is payday. Heroes of Might and Magic. It is an ancient game. Turned based, like a game of chess. A near infinite amount of replayability. One can get it on GOG Galaxy. www.gob.com Imho, it peaked at HOM3. HOM3 is what my username is about. Road Rash. The spiritual successor Road Redemption is a lot of fun. Sokom. That was the most realistic shooting game I've played. Sokom 2 was my peak of video gaming skill. I was in high school and would play that game for like 12 hours a day. I was in the Hash 2 clan in the Tilda Tilda World Tilda Tilda USA on game battles. Man I miss that time. Now I'm just a washed up guy in his 30s that can barely find time to game on the weekends. Armored Core. From software hit the soul's money and left my robo homies to rust. Edit, good lord. I wasn't expecting this reaction. Thanks for the gold. 
Also for my Robo Homies on PC look up Emma SS Builder. It's like Armored Core meets the coolest customized RTO I've seen in a long time. Cheers. Legacy of Kane. Soul Reaver, what a game. Given the choice, whether to rule a corrupt and failing empire, or to challenge the fates for another throw a better throw against one's destiny what was a king to do? But does one even truly have a choice? One can only match, move by move, the machinations of fate and thus defy the tyrannous stars. It is iconic. Infamous. The first two were absolutely amazing and told a great cohesive narrative across both games. The third was just okay, it didn't do anything risky and the story was serviceable. The third might not have been amazing story or gameplay wise but fuck did it look amazing. Truly felt like next gen back in 2014. The red and blue soundtracks to the second game were astounding. I still listen to those and think about the flooded areas. <laughs>